Now to get started with writing Django code and creating a Django application, we need to install Django. Now for this, you can also Google for Django installation to find the official docs. And here you can learn all about that, though I'll also show you how it works here. But this is a great backup resource. In the end, we'll need to run this command, though that might also be python 3 m pip install Django if you have multiple versions of Python installed on your system. Now here, I did already create a new folder, a folder for this uh, project here in the end. And in there, I set up a virtual environment, which is not required, which is optional. And then you can run python m pip install Django in there, or as I just said, maybe use Python 3-M if you got multiple versions of Python installed. Uh, for example, if you're on Mac OS, then you might still have Python 2 installed and Python 3. And then you should ensure that you do use Python 3 by adding the 3 here. So that's something you, which you might need to add. Then if you hit enter, this will install this Django package onto your system so that you can use it in any Python project you have, including this project which we're creating here. Now, once you did install it, we can create a new Django project. For this, you can run Django-admin, which is now a new command which is available because we installed Django on our system. Django admin start project. That's a command which we can now run and we should then also enter a project name. And here I will name my project Django underscore course underscore site. Though that project name is up to you, you should not use blanks or dashes in the name though. Now you can hit enter and this will now scaffold, create, a new Django project, which you can now open with any editor of your choice. Now, popular editors for working with Python would be PyCharm or the editor I'm going to use, Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code is a great free IDE which has great Python support with the right extensions installed and therefore I will use Visual Studio Code here and I already do have it installed. You can visit code.visualstudio.com to then download and install it for your operating system from there. Now once you installed it, you can open it and then open this project folder which you just created. In my case, Django underscore course underscore site with it. Now in that project folder, you should find a manage.py file and another folder which has that same name again, Django underscore course underscore site in my case. And I'll explain what's inside these folders in just a second. Now to finish the project setup here or the configuration for this project, I strongly recommend that you go to view extensions and you do install the Python extension here. So you search for Python and install that Python extension from Microsoft here, here into Visual Studio Code. And this can take a short while. And once this is installed, you also might want to install PyLens, which also helps with code completion and so on in Python projects. So you also might want to install PyLens here. Now I'll reload the window to activate it. And now with that, we should be almost good to go. Here I'm asked whether I wanna make PyLens my default language server for Python and I'll say yes and reload. This window should pop up as soon as you open a Python file with it, which I did here. And now once you did that, you see I'm getting some yellow squiggly lines here that it's not finding this uh, package, this module here. You might not be getting this if you're getting this. Make sure you press Command Shift P or Control Shift P on Windows so that you open this command menu and there search for Python interpreter and then choose select interpreter for Python. And here you can choose from all the Python interpreters it finds on your system. And of course those might be different from what you see here on my screen. Now in the end here you have to choose the interpreter which you used for installing that Django package. 
Now I did select the correct Python interpreter here for me and therefore these yellow squiggly lines are gone now. Now we can ignore this manage py file for now. This is one of the files created by the Django admin command when we created this project. Instead, let's focus on this subfolder here, which carries our project name as a name. In there, we got a couple of files. And when we look at these files, the WSGI and the ASGI files, we can ignore those for now. They are related to deployment. And I do talk in a little bit more detail about them and about deployment in general in my complete course in the deployment section. This does not matter to us here. The settings py file, as the name suggests, is there for us to configure this Django project though. And this will be a more important file and we'll come back to it from time to time to change certain things or add certain settings. Though the default settings, which you find in there, will already get us uh, pretty far. And you should leave those default settings as they are, unless you have a good reason for changing something here. Now the URLs py file, that's an important file, which in the end will control which routes, which URLs our website supports later. So that when we enter our domain.com slash something, different things happen. Different pages are loaded and shown to the user. And we have to register all those different pages, the different paths which we want to support here in this URLs py file, or to be precise, also in another URLs py file to which I'll come back later. So this will be important for telling Django which URLs on our page we want to support. 